we can't really do that online. <laughs> so we have carved out a couple of hours break, but the first half hour, I'd like to suggest that you use that to practice some walking meditation, to practice arriving with every step. So we'll meet back here at 1.30. Before I give some instruction, could uh, I check how many people here have done walking meditation before? You can just indicate with your hands if you have uh, your video on, yeah. And anyone who hasn't, don't worry if you... Okay, so I can see that a couple of people haven't. So there are different ways to practice walking meditation, but. I'd like to encourage you that, to regard it as a really important part of practice. And I say that, not wishing to be hypocritical, to remind myself as well, that it's not just a fill-in sort of between your times of sitting. It's, it's a meditation in itself. And the particular advantage of walking meditation is that it can help connect the mindfulness that you establish in your sitting practice you know, with closed eyes, it can help to connect that to your everyday life. Because in your everyday life, you're generally, unless you're like me, sitting behind a computer screen <laughs> most of the time, you're generally going to be a little bit more physically active. And those are the times that sometimes we can be pulled outside, we can forget our body, we can forget what we're doing with our feet or our hands. And we can be just so engrossed, you know, in sort of getting from A to B or getting on to the next task that we lose a lot of our present moment awareness, our mindfulness. So establishing us, our mindfulness in the walking posture can be really greatly beneficial for your daily life. But it's also quite a powerful practice in itself to come more and more closely into the present moment because it has the extra um, advantage of being a little bit more interesting than sitting down. A lot is happening when you move your legs, when you move your feet. A lot is happening even in one step, right? So what we tend to do is to choose an area where we can walk. I know some of you have beautiful environments to walk in. You might want to be outdoors in your garden or maybe even in the countryside. Otherwise, you might want to choose a room in the house, which is a little bit maybe longer than others with a straight kind of um, stretch, which is clear, uh, to use as your walking path. And the idea is not to focus on where you're getting to, but just, just try and learn to arrive in every step. So we basically take our steps. It might be seven to 20 steps is a good kind of length. Um, and we walk to one end of the path and then we pause and turn around and walk back again. Yeah? But in every step, we learn to notice the sensations in the feet or if you wish in the legs, it depends how much focus you want to have or um, whether you want to be a little bit more expansive. Um, and you just notice the foot as it lifts and then the foot as it moves across and the foot as it lowers down and you can experience different sensations in the sole of the foot, maybe in the muscles of the foot or even as I say in the whole leg if you wish, um, as the foot moves and as it touches the ground. So it's quite interesting and I think an extra little element that I would add for today is to just notice if you can arrive in each step with patience. So your patience with each step that you take and you really fully arrive, allow all the weight to move into that foot before you take the next step. Yeah? So you're patient enough to wait step by step. If you feel that that's too slow for you and you're getting tense or tight, it's okay. You can speed it up a little bit. But the point is not to kind of get anywhere or go anywhere. It's just to arrive with each moment. Yeah. So I hope that's clear enough. 
You can also use the ends of the path to kind of remind you if, for example, you find in the middle of that walking, like somewhere in the middle of your path, you started thinking about what to cook for lunch or that you don't really want to be doing this for too much longer or oh, it feels like ages, but only five minutes has passed. <laughs> if this happens, it's really nice to have the end of the path because at the end you have a little bit more time to kind of arrive, stand, feel the body standing. You know, you might even want to close your eyes at that point just to stop and regain that mindfulness. And then it takes a little bit more effort to start to turn. So in the turning also, there are different muscles, different uh, parts of the body involved. So you turn and again, if you find your mind is still kind of churning up or it's a bit restless, you can again stop, close your eyes, arrive. I find it really helpful actually to arrive in the body standing and to feel the weight of the body dropping down into the feet and to just ground myself. You know, it's a very strong posture. Sometimes when I'm walking, if my mind's getting calm, I actually stay like that for quite a while. You know, it could even be like two minutes, five minutes, if you wish. It's a standing meditation posture. But I just um, would caution that if you are doing that, and you're not sure about your balance, or maybe you get a little bit lightheaded from time to time, just keep your eyes like gently downcast, but maybe not closed to avoid any potential dizziness. Okay, so there's some advice. And I would suggest, I mean, it's up to you, you know, but at least 20 minutes to half an hour, uh, maybe until 12 or so. And then you have an hour and a half. So you might wish to cook yourself something nice or um, maybe have something quicker, but whatever it is, don't cut any corners. We're being patient, remember? So patience helps us to care for the moment and it helps us to care for our bodies and minds. So do nourish yourself well and enjoy every morsel, knowing that this morsel could be your last. If that creates a lot of fear, you know, maybe some people do have like terminal illnesses or a fear of death, then forget that, just, just eat each mouthful with gratitude, with a sense of um, appreciation that, you know, you're so fortunate to have such a wonderful meal and to be able to eat until you're full. It's a rare privilege in this world, you know, although everybody here shares that privilege, this is actually uh, really quite amazing and it may not always be that way. So just see if you can really appreciate each and every moment in this in-between um, period. And also you have the opportunity for some resting meditation, lying down or what Ajahn Brahm calls flat out meditation. His only yoga posture, the Sav Shavasana. <laughs> That's the only yoga posture that Ajahn Brahm does. <laughs> actually it's not true because he does the sitting posture this is his joke not mine so I'm not being cheeky he is very good at um, having humor towards himself so you can try the flat out meditation too and when I say the word meditation I don't mean that you have to stay awake it's actually an opportunity for you to rest I do it most days actually um, I have a little I know you can call it siesta, but I just lie flat on my back for maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. And I start by spreading awareness through my body and just with loving kindness and just really allow my body to relax. And at some point during that time, my mind usually drifts and I get really quite a nice rest. And I've noticed even if I only get to the point just before sleep, it's a very relaxed state and it, it really re-energizes the mind. So see if you can do that, even if you only find you have five or 10 minutes, it's nice to just um, learn to put the brakes on in different ways, you know, because these are all things that you can bring into your daily life. So see how that feels for you. And we'll meet again at half past one. So I would suggest arriving five minutes before then so we can start on time, yeah? Uh, I'm not sure with the hosts, I would probably suggest we close it for these two hours, but I'm not sure what you prefer to do. I, I, yeah. yeah, if you're if you're not going to close it, uh, you can still put your videos off. Yeah, yeah. You want to yeah, say? I, th I think uh, I think we'll close the room and we'll I'll reopen it at one fifteen. So if you want to come in at one fifteen and maybe just kind of get settled together, uh, is that okay with you, Venerable? That's perfect. Sounds great. Yeah. So do keep the link. Don't look at your other emails, just keep the link because you've offered yourself a gift today. So see if you can, you know, preserve whatever 
however little bit of stillness and peace you've developed don't take it for granted just see if you can yeah stay present for that and avoid the mind going off into too many distractions okay so we'll see you back in a couple of hours enjoy your walking your eating and your lying down Do you want to stop the recording?